The purpose of this video is to instruct the user on how to use the new TALIS feature that is found in QView version 3.0. This tutorial was recorded using QView version 3.0. This feature was not available in previous versions of QView. TALIS stands for Torque Angle Lever Arm System and it is part of a joint collaborative effort between Dr. Francois Lintz and Curvebeam Engineers. The button to launch TALIS is located in the upper toolbar just to the right of center and when you click on it you see the following dialog box appear where it says TALIS has not been approved as of yet by any regulatory body as a diagnostic tool in humans and ask if you'd like to proceed. TALIS at this time is being used primarily for research to establish a three-dimensional database of important anatomical landmarks and once the information gathering is complete it will then be available for use as a diagnostic tool. In order to proceed with TALIS you must first mark four critical points on any one of the axial, sagittal, or coronal views. You must strictly follow the point-click sequence in the NPR imagery to assure proper foot laterality detection. And then the resulting graph will depict anatomy in radiology view orientation. Proceeding in order, we're going to mark the first metatarsal, the fifth metatarsal, the calcaneus, and then the talus. First, we're going to look for the lowermost point of the distal first metatarsal head. So we can see roughly where all three of our slab lines coincide is the lowermost point of the distal metatarsal head. We are then going to right click and we're going to see three dimensional coordinates appear under MET1. Next, you'll notice that Talus tells us to set the fifth metatarsal by right click. So we are going to look for, again, the most distal head and the lowest point of the distal head when we can see it appear in all three windows intersected by all three slab lines. Again, we're going to right click. Next, we set the calcaneus by a right click. So we're now looking for the lowermost point of the calcaneus. And again, we should be able to see it in all three of our views. And all three of our slab lines should intersect at the lowest point, which we will then mark with a right click. And then last, we're going to be setting the talus by right click. The point we're looking for on the talus is the top of the tailor dome and the center line of the top of the tailor dome. So we're going to the highest point on the talus. And then we'll be looking for the midline on the highest point of the talus. And we're going to right click to set our final point. Looking now at the results of the automatic calculations performed by TALIS, we can see it has identified this as a left foot. The foot ankle offset is about 8%. The calcaneal offset in millimeters is about 18.7. And the heel angle is about 21.5 degrees. Looking further at the results, we can see that this patient's left foot tends to have a more valgus condition as opposed to a varus condition. If by chance you have right-clicked and placed your marks out of the correct sequence, or if you have right-clicked on the wrong part of the anatomy and you wish to make corrections, you can just go down to where it says new, click on that, and all of the values will reset. You will then have to mark the series of four points again. As was previously mentioned, TALIS right now is primarily being used for research purposes. So for that reason, you can create a database of your patient's scans. You can also export that database. And that can be sent to Dr. Lintz as he compiles a series of scans under weight-bearing condition from the PEDCAT, which will be used to establish a database to help identify what are considered norms and also different types of pathologies. Future versions of TALIS will allow you to import pathologies and there will be additional diagnostic capabilities of TALIS. Once TALIS has finished the calculations, you can save the information to the database. Clicking on Save to Database, 
you can see that some of the patient demographic information from the DICOM header has already been saved. You will need to select a type of pathology. And if there happens to be more than one pathology, you can select multiple pathologies as well. You should also enter the patient age, their height in centimeters, weight in kilograms, and select the gender of the patient as well. You can then save the information to the database. Please note that the information will be scrambled in the database for patient anonymization. If you're joining the TALIS research program, this information with the patient data anonymized will then be sent to Dr. Lintz for inclusion in his database of norms and pathologies. To export the TALIS database, click on Export Database, either create or select a folder for that purpose. And when you name the file, we suggest that you include a date, so this way we know at what point in time your database was exported to differentiate the older database exports from the newer ones. Over time, the list of pathologies available for diagnostic purposes in TALIS will be updated. You can import new pathologies to TALIS by clicking and selecting the file that contains the new list of pathologies. Open it. It will then be included in the TALIS tools. The next time you save a patient to the database, you will see that there is an increased list of pathologies available to choose from. When a new list of pathologies is available, be sure to contact CurveBeam customer or technical support and they can provide you with the file to import. To find out more about TALIS and to be part of this initial collaborative effort, please contact Vinti Singh at CurveBeam in order to be part of this effort and to contribute to the growing TALIS database. Be sure to check back to the QBU tutorials page on a regular basis for future updates to the TALIS tool as well as future versions of QBU software. This video was recorded on QBU version 3.0 and TALIS was not available in previous versions of QBU. To upgrade to QBU version 3.0 or whatever the current version of QBU might be, be sure to contact CurveBeam Technical Support. Software upgrades are by appointment only.